International Training and Conference Center. It's the most advanced training facility for union operating and stationary engineers in North America. Located on 265 acres in Crosby, Texas, just outside of Houston, this state-of-the-art facility has everything to develop the skills of an expanding and varied group of construction and maintenance professionals. The new center builds on the training delivered by our local union programs and demonstrates our commitment to high quality skills training to our contractors and owners. A blue ribbon panel of IUOE training directors helped design the facility. It will meet the needs of our members in our industry today and for future generations of operating and stationary engineers. We had all of our training instructors come uh, in around the country. They gave us any ideas that they thought that would be uh, complimentary here that we could train on the latest and greatest uh, of equipment. Here in Crosby, operating engineers have access to the newest cranes and heavy equipment, modern classrooms and labs, advanced simulators, drones, and the best pipeline construction training in North America. It just opened my eyes to a whole new world of doing things, and I think it's it would benefit any operator to come take the training if they were, if they wanted to be a part of the pipeline industry. The main building is a stunning multi-purpose venue. It hosts classes and meetings for a wide range of groups. Stationary engineers get hands-on training in real-world conditions in the physical plant. Built with space to learn, Lessons can quickly move from classroom to the plant floor or rooftop. The design allows for an entire system to go offline for training, while redundant systems stay online to service the facility. The new International Training and Conference Center is a reminder that our training programs are second to none. Every year, the IUOE and our signatory partners invest over $180 million in training and sponsor 100 local training programs in the U.S. and Canada. The International Training Center takes our training to the next level. From apprentices to journeymen, for operating or stationary engineers, the International Training Center is the best place to improve skills and to learn on the most technologically advanced equipment available. Well, they're going to come down here and they're, they're going to uh see something different and new and it's going to be uh, something they've never seen before and they're going to enjoy every bit of it. The International Training Center has 227 dorm rooms for overnight stays, 17 classroom labs, a top shelf cafeteria and amenities after a long day of training. It's clear that the new International Training and Conference Center is helping to ensure that IUOE operating and stationary engineers have the very best training in all of North America. We hope to see you in Crosby soon. Isn't that impressive? What a facility, huh? <coughs> I think we'll be all right. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think I'll be all right. Um, <laughs> This is Mark Scott. Uh, he's, uh, there's four pipeline reps throughout the country for the operating engineers on the pipeline side. Uh, he's based out of Kentucky. Um, I get a, a lot of bad press. I'm actually from New York. Uh, but, uh, I'm right on the VA border, so uh, it's not New York City. But um, our training director usually attends these and uh, does quite a bit of the speaking about this training facility and our pipeline training. A quick overview of how it used to work before this facility um, and we have a sister facility that ties the pipeline training down in Boston, Kentucky, which Mark will talk about um, here in a minute. Um, the pipeline training used to be kind of a traveling road show. If a lot of the work was either going to be like uh, when Ruby was going, a lot of uh, uh, the Midwest or Western part of the United States work was going to be uh, happening. In the next couple of years, a lot of the local training sites out there 
the uh, training director then um, would schedule this equipment, which is now stationary, to be trucked. Well, if I'd be on the East Coast, it all has to be trucked. Um, and we'll go through another uh, set of slides on our inventory of equipment. Well, trucking, you know, it'd be you know, kind of on the West Coast for uh, two or three years, uh, and then they, Florida Gas is, is uh, you know, plant work, so then you'd ship it down to that Southeast. And trucking became a, a major um, you know, cost, not, not very cost effective uh, way of doing things. Our general president, uh, when he was elected, um, came up with the idea, and it's, it's still his um, main words. Training is the future, and training has to happen now. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's the pipeline, the cranes that you saw in the, on the uh, video, um, it's heavy highway, GPS, the drones, the stationary. Uh, that facility is, is, uh, is run by itself. Um, yes, the gas comes in, uh, but all the HVAC, electrical, everything is done out of this building here. And like I said, stationary engineers um, in our world is uh, they're our, our union. Uh, they're a large part of our, our group. Um, they're, they're the electricians, the, the uh, heating and control units, similar to our, you know, the gas company and, and power companies, compressor stations. That's all computerized. There's three um, different main style of pumps that the industry uses. So um, stationary engineers from all over the country can go there, they can shut actually two of them units down, train on them, and when they, you know, the instructors there will make something wrong with that unit. And if you know, the stationary engineers that are there to train have to fix it and then put it back online and then better work. So because um, you know that's what runs the facility. But getting back to you know the pipeline training um, once the uh, general president started working on putting this together um, in 2018, this opened. Um, everything is stationed out of there for uh, you know all of our basic pipeline stuff. Anything from uh, your dozers, your excavators, the bending, um, horizontal directional drilling, the mud reclaimers, um, two styles of pipe handlers, being the deck hand and the vacuum works. Um, at first, they kind of wanted to move everything there, which included the winch, winching and the steep slope. Well, Texas is kind of flat, so it can actually build a, a, a life-size steep slope um, where you could actually train people for it to make sure they knew what was going on. It just wasn't feasible. We would have needed another 260 acres. But, um, so that is now our hill, hill work. And um, advanced operations for steep slopes is now in Boston, Kentucky. Um, <coughs> uh, can we go to the next slide? Um, <coughs> pretty much, okay, the, the 15 full time uh, instructors, they're full time from. Generally about this time, about October 1st, October 15th, uh, due to COVID, we're still shut down. And that's one reason Brian isn't here. He's in Crosby. Um, last week, this week, uh, dealing with uh, a few issues and actually having meetings with the state officials and county officials to see when we are gonna be allowed to open and have our members come there to train. So, um, Back on wood, hopefully we can get back up in, in full steam by November 1st. We're hoping before, but that's, that's what we're, we're um, shooting for. Uh, next slide. Uh, you know, it, like the video says, it's from beginner. Uh, some here from some of our beginner classes. Um, they might be for a member that's maybe has some skill, but never been on a pipeline, but really isn't a cold journeyman. The apprentices, they're encouraged to come. Um, this, the class schedules, they're, they're split up. 
your beginner courses will generally be about a week. Your intermediate and advanced courses will be three weeks. Um, they are set up just like a normal pipeline. Uh, six days a week, 10 hours a day, um, you go to, to training um, in Crosby. Uh, Sunday's your day off, just like any other day. There's laundry facilities there. The guys can do their laundry. The ladies can do their laundry. Um, kind of relax, get ready for that, that second or third week um, that they're there. And Boston's um, set up the same way. Um, well, Boston uses the motels, but uh, we don't have living facilities in Boston. But you know, their, their motels are paid for. Uh, everything's paid for, and I'll touch base uh, on that stuff. Uh, there's a little slide for that. But I mean, our angle dozers, lunch classes, uh, you know, Creek Cross, that's how to properly um, approach a stream crossing, um, build a bridge. Everybody in this room, in this industry, knows, as far as I'm concerned, is, uh, knows there's two things that, that control our world. That's safety and environmental. You breach either one of them, you're going to be shut down, um, or you're going to be you know, um, answered to more than a conference call. Um, Better engineers, like I said, uh, hydro excavation. That's becoming a big thing. You go in anybody's facility anymore. You pretty much don't put a bucket in the ground until everybody knows that there's nothing there except what you're going at. Um, electrical lines, you know, whatever it may be. Um, two other uh, things that uh, um, this hasn't been updated since last year, but this year um, there's been uh, a few classes added. One uh, is uh, hydro testing. Um, a lot of the old timers that always took care of the hydro testing, they're retiring. Um, we're getting, so the contractors would say, we we're having a hard time finding qualified, trained people. So after the pipeline's buried, you got to hydro test it. Um, a lot of our maintenance work that, that FEMSA and the federal DOT is pushing on the gas company, you have to back in, dig it up, put some launchers and receivers on, rehydro test your line <coughs> to possibly upgrade it or just certify that it's still good. Um, so that, that's becoming a, a bigger thing. So this year they've started a, a, a full class um, I believe it's going to be two weeks, six days a week, 10 hours a day, and they're going to go through A to Z. Um, and uh, I think at first it was, I think going to be open to everybody, but I think the contractors say, hey, I've got a couple guys, this contractor's got a couple guys, this local has a few guys. They're going to try to, to maybe handpick some here going forward, but then it'll be eventually open to everybody. Um, so, I mean, this, this falls back on that safety aspect of, of this. Um, <coughs> next slide. So there, there's a list of, of what we specifically have, um, you know, in our pipeline training program. Um, you know, it, it's, if you imagine, splitting that into three and trucking some to a third to Nevada, a third to Colorado, and the rest of California. Um, it's all in one location now. Um, and that's where it stays. Um, the equipment we use for winching and whatnot, that stays generally in the um, I'll let Mark touch base because there's been some additions down in Kentucky to that site. <clears throat> you know, we built a site in Crosby and thought that was going to be wherever they could be. Well, it didn't work out before the Winchin Park. So, down in Kentucky, down in Boston, Kentucky, it's a little spot in the road uh, between Elizabethtown and Bardstown. Uh, very hilly there, and even the hills that we had there wasn't quite steep enough, so we even made a hill that's even steeper. Got to the point where the guys thought uh, it's just a little too steep, so we had to soften it down just a little bit. Because it, it was better than 45 degrees, and that's, that's pretty steep. So you couldn't climb it on foot, put it that way. Uh, 
but then uh, they seen more potential there, and that's where the international wanted to uh, put another class there for advanced classes in the Winston Park. So everything that they do in Crosby, they got one spread up there that they do, uh, and everything is emphasized on Winston. Whether it be with the side booms, packing the pipe up and down the hill, whether it be digging the ditch up and down the hill or whatever, it's, it's all all these machines are tied together and everybody's got to work in unison. So they built a new facility there just for the pipeline training. Uh, I'm from there, that's my local, and uh, my local got together with the international and put the funds together to build this. Uh, it's a 160 building uh, and it's got room for expansion. Got a mezzanine on it that can make more classrooms. Uh, the classrooms that they do have can be divided off into three different classrooms, and they even built a four bay shop to be able to get equipment in and, and work on all the equipment. So it's a very nice facility. They're going to dedicate it to the first of November and start using it pretty soon. So, um, just like Paul talked about. I'm a product out of these classes. I started back in, I think, 99, going through these classes. And if you're just a general operator, a lot of pipeline guys can go out and work on building trades and that stuff if you're, if you're an operator. But it's really hard to get into the industry of pipeline. And if you don't have these classes, you just don't know the work. And uh, I've been on jobs where I first got hired in after being through these classes. I see 17 guys get run off because they just didn't know the work. They had good hands, but they just didn't know the work. The only reason why I stayed was because I had this training. So, that's not all I've got. Yeah, um, and the interesting part, um, and a lot of people take uh, for granted that it's, it's just a, a union training. Um, facility. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's on the national building train side, the um, stationary side uh, for your HVACC stuff and, and what heats that place and, and it takes care of that place in uh, Crosby. But the pipeline, the, the operating engineers and the, what, uh, the Pipeline Contractors Association, there's a group board committee that so how this program started back in 2000 really being start started to uh, be put together if our director and a couple of the instructors and our general president says hey you know we are going to buy five new estimators and two new dozers we just can't write the check there's three or four from the operator side on this committee and four from the, the pipeline contractors. They have four meetings a year and they're always uh, working together to make the training better. The pipeline contractors, four, may come to the table and say, this is what we're seeing in the field, what is new, latest, greatest, this gas company has got the big project coming they're going to insist on this. Well, if we don't have that in our program, they're going to agree because one hand washes the other. It, it's a group joint effort to make this work. Uh, the contractors can't say, well, um, we want the hydro test class. We're just going to you know, write a, a, here's the checkbook, go uh, you know, spend a couple hundred thousand dollars on all the test equipment and gauges and and that's probably just the, the tip of the iceberg. Uh, they've got to agree to it, sign off on it, and, and they collaborate together. Um, what should it be priorities or what's new, the latest, greatest coming down the road. So it, it's, it's a group effort on both sides to make this work um, because if we can't provide the, the skill and, and uh, um, give them the operators and, and things that the contractors need to make the client happy. The contractors, they're in the same boat. We are, we're on the outside looking at it. So 
the things they're talking about now, we might institute the year. So it's, it's just a group effort from both sides. Um, how, do, how our members register for the classes? That's that's really changed, especially since uh, 2018. Next slide, please. Uh, the members, we do it all online anymore. It used to be a paper trail. It used to take way too long. But the member gets online, gets on our international <coughs> website. There's the training schedule goes through. Um, they've got to uh, re be registered and approved three weeks prior to the course, uh, or for most courses. Uh, but clicks down through there. I want to go to Crosby for uh, fact works um, for you know stringing the uh, single or double jointed pipe. Clicks okay. That's uh, first week in December. Uh, clicks on it. Um, it'll tell them immediately if there's any openings. That class is full, he'll have to go to the next one. He clicks on it, fills the application out. Uh, they've got to have a working, uh, preferably cell phone or landline that you know, they're readily somewhat available at. Definitely has to have an email address and his locals uh, information. Um, press the send, it goes to the pipeline department goes to his home local. He's approved by his home local by the business manager. It goes back to the pipeline department. <coughs> um, he gets an email, you've been approved to attend the class. He or she gets approved to, uh, they send him an email. Um, what are your top three choices to fly out of? Person lists the top three choices he flies out of. Um, this, for instance, uh, say one was Canton, one was Cleveland, one was, one was Cincinnati. They'll get him or her to the closest airport that uh, the international deals with and sets his, his or her plane ticket up and sends it to him in the mail. This train does not cost the member a dime. It's part of his hourly wage that gets paid into, that's agreed to by the IUOE and the Pipeline Contractors Association. So it's all member funded. Um, and that's why we um, strongly encourage our members to upgrade their skills, whether um, it's on a new piece of equipment or whatever. Um, after that's set, like he's got, he or she's got the plane ticket. They fly them in, we pick them up at uh, one of the two uh, airports outside Houston. Sean takes them to there, to the train facility. The person does not have to leave. We've had three meals a day. You saw the, the hotel rooms that are provided. Um, there's actually a snack bar that's open 23 hours a day. So somebody gets the munchies at you know, midnight or something, the cafeteria is closed. And, it's a full, it's more of a restaurant than it is a cafeteria. That's what it looks like as a cafeteria. But I mean, there's there's salad bar, hot section, sandwich section, and I'm not sure, I never, I've been there once. Um, I'm not sure what's over in the other section because I was well, the, the profuse. But, you know, it's, um, our members don't have to, to leave. They're there to train. And, and that's why the pipeline sets it up just like a job. Um, but uh, so it's, it's funded by the members through their pay, and, and that's uh, that's what kind of runs runs it. Next slide. Um, there's just some more pictures on you know the two part of, uh, uh, approval process. They fill it out, send it to local. Um, you know, and it gets sent back and they're, they're notified that they're approved. Um, there's, you know, when it comes to um, the training itself, our instructors, um, they'll, they'll generally be on a, a non-COVID year. A lot of them will start some of the beginner training in October, go full scale November up to Christmas, take a couple weeks off, go home with the families. The trainers are back to the site. Um, these our trainers um, just don't sit there in the off season, twiddling their thumbs um, when we're busy in, in the construction world. 
the trainers um, are hand selected. They are actually either foremen and or operators running the equipment out in the field for our contractors. So they're they're seeing the latest and greatest or if, say they went to work for Enbridge and Enbridge comes up with a new safety or environmental prop policy. They're taking it back, letting Brian Abel, our training director, know hey, Enbridge is instituting, instituting this policy. It's going to be mandatory next year. So it gets put into some of the classroom time that our members um, are taking during the, the training that they're at these sites. So they're seeing the latest and greatest or, or hearing what might be coming. And we're, you know, we're trying to stay in step with some of the changes that, that will be taking place. Um, so, you know, and then they'll work the training season and then come spring, uh, you know, early summer, they'll go back out in the field.